Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we've been talking about the revelation of eternal life and it's important because of what God is doing in our lives right now. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast and continue what we're talking about, can we release our faith and call for and receive our daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith and we are standing in agreement concerning this. Say with me, say, Father, I believe you give me daily benefits. So right now, I make demand for today's daily bread. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Why do we ask God for it? Because he is able and he is willing. He told us to ask. Jesus said, ask. Give us this day our daily bread. Praise God. You can't say, I've done it enough. You can't say, I did it yesterday. No, our daily bread. So learn it until it becomes a conscious thing in your mind. That's how you relate with God. Praise God. All right, then. Now let's go to where we read this yesterday. We've been reading this actually. But then John, not first John, now John chapter 17. John chapter 17 and from verse 2. Jesus speaking, I call, I call this the holiest chapter in the Bible. I told you that yesterday also. So John chapter 17 and verse 2. Jesus speaking, he said, as you have given him, that's Jesus, authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Oh, you know, each time I, I, I read this, something happens inside of me. Something happens inside of me. The reality of this statement always hits me. So Jesus is saying, you have given him authority. That's talking, to, talking about himself. He, God has given Jesus authority over all flesh. And this is the purpose for that authority. Not that he will treat them any. No, 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 no. The purpose is that Jesus will give eternal life to as many as God have given him. Now, look at what Jesus said in verse 3. He said, and this is eternal life. What is it? That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I explained something to you, or rather I said something in previous broadcasts, that what Jesus actually said here is this, that they may know you, the only true God, true Jesus Christ. That's, that's what Jesus said in this place. That they may know God through Jesus Christ. Now, when we make statements like this, you know, someone look at it and say, "Ah, why are you making things up?" Hey, listen, it's based on understanding from the things the Holy Spirit teaches. Now, when the Holy Spirit is teaching you something and you believe He is true, you now begin to look at these things that are written. And his teachings will begin to give you understanding. See? So, Jesus defined eternal life here. And, and it's important you understand what he was talking about. He said, this is eternal life. Now, you would think to receive eternal life, he has to lay hands on you. You understand what I'm saying? Or to receive eternal life, you, you, you have to do something or so. But Jesus clearly stated here that this is eternal life that they will know you the only true god and they will know you through jesus christ now he is the only true god right and he decided to give to us his only begotten son and jesus made some powerful statements now you won't understand what jesus may know when i say that they will know you through Jesus Christ. In other words, they will know you through the eyes of Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus is saying. Here. That we will know the Father through his eyes. 
Now, it is only Jesus. This is one thing you must get. It is only Jesus that was bold enough to call God his father. My father, my father. You know, that's part of the things that the, made the Jews to be angry with him. And sometimes even, you know, most religions, for example, they, they consider Jesus as a prophet. But don't bring that leg of Jesus is the son of God. So they say, what do you mean? Does God have a child? So does God have a wife? That's how they want to reason. But see, there's a reason Jesus came with that um, knowledge or with that expression of God being his father. So he is the son. See? Now, he wants us, that's God, he wants us to see him and to know him through the eyes of his son. So God is inviting us to interact with him as sons. I need you to understand this. Because if you don't get this, you will know the function of how eternal life works. So Jesus, the job of Jesus is to lead us to the Father. Now, when I say lead us to the Father, I'm not saying physically carry us. Follow me. One, two, three. Yes. One. No, 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 no. He wants us to know the Father. That's God's intention also, or desire also. He wants us to know the Father exactly how He knows Him. He's the only one that knows the truth about the Father. Sometimes people come up with all this argument, hey, but the Bible says God is a consuming fire. The Bible says God kills it. And he makes a life. Now, people get confused when they talk to God, when they talk about God and say, he's, he's God, you know, he does anything that he likes. Now, that is a knowledge they have about him. But Jesus is interested in us knowing the Father from his perspective. And that's exactly how the Father works. That, that, that's the whole purpose that's why jesus came if you don't get this yet you still have a long way to go this was the exact reason jesus came to give us eternal life and what is that eternal life the accurate knowledge of the person of the father that is how eternal life is transmitted now you see the thing about the the, the realm of the spirit is this you become what you see. You become what you interact with. You become what you understand. If you understand wrong and you become passionate in that wrong, that is exactly what you become. I was sharing with this with, with you, was it yesterday or, or, or two days ago? I was sharing this with you. You know, Elijah told those guys, if I am a, if, if if I be a prophet of God, let fire come down and consume you. And fire truly came down. And Jesus let us know that that's not the Father's will. That was not the Father that did that. And I said, so who did that? I told you it's very simple. Angels did that. The angels that were working with Elijah, they did that. And then, and because they have jurisdiction on the earth, so they can do those things. They can manipulate with the earthly elements. And so when a prophet that is sent of God, that's why as prophet of God, we must be careful the kind of words we release out of our mouths. Because as we grow in the things of the Spirit, God gives us authority. And the more authority you gain in the realm of the Spirit, the more angels you command. So there are things you will say, even though you have not heard it from God, or you have not been commanded by God to say it, and you say it in this earth realm, and it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Not because God sanctioned it. That's why you must be careful when you follow people because of manifestations. See? See, most times, for example, when we do ministry, many acts we do in the ministry, they are controlled by angels. I'm telling you the truth, they are controlled by angels. And many people have been so deceived by this. I'll give you an example. If you are called... To be a prophet, now when I mean prophet now, there are different kinds of um, prophets that, and you need to understand that. There, is, there are those who God have called to be his prophets, so they, they are let into his mind. And then there are those who are sent out as prophets to the people. Now, so those ones, now, those are the ones you see them doing all the dramatic displays 
that you see. Now, many of them are truly called by God. Now, they are called to the people. So they can come and start telling the people things about their life. They function in word of knowledge and, and, and tell people your phone number, your house address. I was in your village. I was in the spirit and I was taken to Susan's old place. And now those works, hear me, hear me. All those works are done by angels. Yes, all those works are done by angels. All those manifestations you see, they are the activities of angels. Those who are called in the healing ministry, the same thing. Oh, when, once I start ministering, people start getting healed. It is angels that are doing all those works. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Now, if you don't know the difference, because a lot of people have gotten into trouble. When I say people, ministers and even followers have gotten into tremendous issues because of lack of understanding. So you see someone, you know this person is a prophet of God, right? And, and he does things and you see the result. But then you see the way he lives his life. And then you wonder, what's going on here? You know, how is he able to do these things and live like this? So you see prophets who fornicate a lot. They commit adultery. They cheat. They lie. And yet, when they start to minister, you'll be wondering, is it the same person? Lots of people have gotten confused. I'll tell you the reason. And say, no, they are using something. No, not all of them. Now, of course, there are people who, who are really, really false. You know what I mean by false? They use any other means apart from God. So those ones were not called. Or they are not functioning in God's prophetic calling. They, they are deceiving people by some means, you know. Now, that's on a different class. I'm talking to people God have called. And there are people God have called and they deviate from the calling. There are people God have called and then they, they are carrying out the work, but their lives do not show what they are doing. You know what I mean by that? So people get confused and they look at these things and say, maybe these things don't matter to God. And many think, oh, mm, there are, this life is a mystery. And some of them even think there is a special grace that covers them. You've heard some of these things before. Even the, the people involved, the, the, the prophet or the, the ministers involved, they begin to think of themselves and say, there's a special grace. And some of them even boast in their quiet places, you know, like, look, I have special grace so, because I had some of the things I have done. What they don't understand is this, and I'm telling you now. Their ministry largely is the functionality of angelic beings. So if God sends you into the ministry of healing, the moment you stand to minister, see, healings will begin to take place. But you know, such people can minister healing so much, but you see, in their own lives, you don't see that healing work. They, they can be so sick, they really won't know what to do. But even in that sick state, state, they get out and they minister. They just stand and hold the microphone. People get up from wheelchairs. And then they have simple stomach ulcer and it's been troubling them. Yes. Why? You see, because that angel was not sent to them personally. That angel was sent for them to do ministry. So as long as they show up in that ministerial place, the angel will be there to work. How you live your life has no business with the angel. The angel has no business with the way you live your life. That's the truth. And such people can even end up going to hell after doing all those ministrations. Jesus said it. So, but people who don't know these things will begin to see God through their eyes. You see that? So, young people seeing this will begin to think, Maybe those things don't matter. Maybe God is not interested in how we live our lives. We can, I can go on living my life anyhow and still be doing ministry and things will be happening. Yes, you can. But then you are not seeing who God really is. Now, Jesus says that we may know God through his eyes. So this is how it works. No, that's the reason Jesus, when he met Peter, he says, follow me. 
and I will make you. So he kept saying follow. And the call to Jesus is the call to follow him. Question, follow him to where? Follow him to the Father. Follow him to know the Father. Now, how do you know the Father? He doesn't sit you down and tell, he, tell you, bring out your notes. Knowing of the Father 101. No, that's not how it works. He teaches you about the Father experientially. You see that? He begins to teach you. Now, there are things you will experience and then he will tell you what to do. And then you're confused like, oh, how did I get that? How did I do that? Then he will take you aside and he will begin to teach you. Now, that's exactly what Jesus have left the Holy Spirit to do with us. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. You see that? Now, how does he guide you into all truth? It's not you folding your legs and sitting down and also, let me teach you one more truth today. No, no, no. Experience. The thing, he will guide you into doing things. He will guide you into experiencing things. I remember one time I had gone for this uh, ministration and I was so angry that because someone has offended, really, really offended me. And I was so angry that day and I went into that meeting. It was supposed to be a prayer meeting. And I converted it to a healing meeting because I just wanted to display power. I just wanted to do something that I was angry that day. I was angry at someone. And, and so I got into that meeting and I just said, look, if you're sick, come out here. And I started laying hands on, on, on sick people. And instantly they were healed. They shared it. They took pains, gone, this, everything. I mean, everyone I laid hands on. But I got back home that day and I was just like, wow, you know, yes. I was just excited, yes. Then I heard that voice and he said to me, I didn't heal those people. True life story. I didn't heal those. Now, I'll tell you, when you hear such things at first, you want to say, Satan, I bind you, get out. You know? But I knew he was the one talking to me. He said, I didn't heal those people. I said, you didn't heal them. How? How did they now get healed? They, you know, <laughs> you know like, they said in Colonials, as for we heard them speak with tongues, praise God. So I said, no, I, they, they, they told their testimony that they got healed. I don't think they were lying. And the Lord began to explain to me. He said, I didn't heal them because you didn't receive a flow and unction from me. Wow. And then he, he, he explained the state of my heart when I went for that meeting. Oh, dear Lord, I humbled myself. And I began to intercede for the people that were here. I said, Lord, at least they are healed. Please confirm the healing in their life. Now, what happened there? What happened? How can the Lord be telling me later that he didn't heal those people? When I knew people got healed in the meeting. Now, what do you think happened? See, that was Jesus taking me by the hand after that meeting to say, that's not how the Father is. This is how the Father is. Oh, I learned a valuable lesson from that day to subdue myself, subdue my mind, especially when I have to deal with issues of the ministry. You've got to watch your heart. Many things to learn with him. But now I know that was the day I began to realize that it's not every manifestation that is of God. Now it doesn't mean the others are they are of the devil. No, no. See, the Bible said, great, Paul said, great is the mystery of godliness. When you begin to brew in the knowledge of God, there are things that, you know, it's like leaving the, the good for the better. You begin to learn and say, ah, it's not. For example, Elijah called on fire. Okay. That must be God. That man of God can call down fire. It doesn't mean God sent down fire. Now I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the, the, the one with the prophets of Baal now. I'm talking about the one with, the, the fire that burnt and, and destroyed people. See, so understand these things. It is only when we follow Jesus that he begins to reveal the knowledge of the Father to us in truth. And as we get into that knowledge, get, guess what we are getting into? We are getting into eternal life. And let me tell you this truth. When that knowledge comes into you, it affects your whole being. It affects your sight. It affects the way you see. It affects the way you interpret God. It affects the way you talk. Praise God. Listen, 
we'll continue tomorrow because my time is off. Praise God. Father, I thank you. This is what you desire, Lord. The accurate knowledge of your personality. And so, Lord, we desire also. Fill us, fill our heart with this truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.